Come on now, you don't sound like you're blessed and highly favored. Nope. Y'all sound like you're a Hollywood crowd. You don't sound holy tonight. You sound like you came to network. You sound like you came to meet somebody. You don't sound like you have a relationship with your Lord and Savior. Anybody know Jesus? Anybody know how good God is? You don't even need a prop to praise Him. You, he's so good to you, you could run up and down every aisle in this place because you can testify how good your God is. I don't know if you realize how blessed it is to be alive right now. Do you realize the blessing of life right now? Do you realize how grateful we are to have breath in our lungs? You better give God some praise today because He didn't have to be this way. It's by His grace and mercy that we can stand here, that we can praise, that we can even understand what people are saying because He's been good to us. Please don't allow what you're going through to suppress your praise. You're alive. That means God's got a plan for your life. Oh, don't let what you're going through put a blanket on your blessing. You better get up and praise your God now. Don't forget what He has already done in your life. Do I have to remind you the last time you were down and out and didn't know how you were going to make rent and you're still in the same apartment? Who am I talking to right now? You didn't even have gas money, but you still found a way to get your what to work. You didn't even have money for your car, though, but they didn't repossess it. I'm talking about somebody who can testify how good God is. Don't play with me right now. Oh, you came because you thought Hollywood is in a sense. No, you got it wrong. If you came for Hollywood, you need to go home. You can get the metro, you can get the bus, we can even make, get you an Uber to take you back to your house. But if you came for God, you came to the right place. I don't understand if you really understand how blessed we are right now. How blessed we are. How blessed we are. Do not take life for granted. I don't have to remind you of the tragic events that we as a world are still dealing with. And not just what happened in Paris, but all of the, the terrorists from Boko Haram that's happening in Africa. All of the things that are happening in Beirut, all across the world, there are these events where people come into gatherings like this with the intention, but something happens where life was not promised. So I don't want us in our comfortable American Los Angeles lifestyle to lose sight of the blessing of life tonight. Don't lose sight. Don't take this for granted. This is a divine moment. It's a divine appointment. It is when we come together in God's name, it is intentional. Please don't get so down in your life that you just say, hey, you know, I'm here, but I don't really want to be here. No, no, you're here for a reason, for a purpose, for a time, for a season. Please don't overlook this moment. Would you do me a favor? Just turn to your neighbor and just hug them. Just let them know, you know, you're, you're praying for them, you're believing for them. Hug them. Hug them. Turn to your other neighbor. Give them a hug. Come on now. Embrace your neighbor. Love them up. Love them up. Just celebrate them for a minute. You don't want nothing from them. You just want to love on them. How about that? Hey, man, you're not asking for a business card. There it is. Hey, good to see you, man. Always good to see you. You're not asking for a business card. Hey, you're just trying to get some connection tonight. Oh, it's a blessing. I'm, I'm really excited that we have the opportunity uh, to be together tonight. Uh, I'm here to tell you that, that every time we come together, it reminds me of the task at hand. And the task at hand is, is for all of us to fully submit. I rest in that point because this is a very hard thing for some of us to do. To receive the fullness that God has already ordained for your life, it requires a full submission. If there was an easier way to do it, I would tell you. Every time I have tried to 
pray for his best, but give him less than my best, it has not worked. If, it, if there was a shortcut to the answer for the thing you've been praying for, I would show you how to get there. I would. But I have to tell you that the path to your purpose and your destiny and the fulfillment of it will take you through the forest of full submission. And I would argue that maybe you have not received all that was possible for you this year because, not because God had not said yes, he said yes, but maybe your yes was only in certain areas of your life. Maybe you've given him a partial yes, so you only received a partial yes for this year. I want to challenge you and provoke you to begin to look at every single area of your life and ask the question, am I putting him first? Am I putting him second? Am I putting him third? Or maybe in this area, he doesn't even make the list. In order to receive all that God has already ordained that is yours, it requires full submission. Now, you notice I didn't say perfection. There's a difference. Perfection is something we all aspire to, but I believe we ain't going to get it till we get to heaven. Amen. Because we are born in this body of sin. We are shaped in iniquity and we keep trying and we fall and we get back up. But I can't practice submission, which means putting him first. Many of us have been praying for, we want to be blessed. Anybody want to be blessed? Anybody want more blessings? How many really want like more blessings? Like you say, Lord, I can handle some more blessings. Okay. All right, boy. I just want to make sure you realize your blessings weigh something. Oh, you want to be blessed, but you don't want to be burdened. I'm sorry. It doesn't work that way. Anything that you pray for, it requires your strength to carry it. Don't think that the blessing that you are believing God for is just going to be light as a feather. I'm sorry you got it wrong. Whatever you're praying God to do, the blessing you want, it's going to require all your strength, all your courage, all your might, and every fiber in your being in order to manage it. If God were to drop on you what he has planned for you right now, some of you, it might destroy you. So we serve a God who loves us enough. He'll just hold it back a little bit. Hold it back. Hold it back. Hold it back. They're not ready yet. They're not ready yet. My prayer is that every time we come into ascend, it is a preparation meeting. It is a preparation meeting. We have to go higher. You have to get to the place where God has called you to be in this world. Because there are people assigned to you that are waiting for you to do the thing that only you can do. And they need you. And we need you. My goal is for us to go higher. And the only way that we're going to go higher is to be challenged. If I came and I pacified you, you would get nothing out of this service. But I come challenging you because I have seen God in a way that I have not seen him before this year. And I'm here to tell you what God has been revealing to me and what I see on a daily basis. Let me tell you something. Everything you're going through right now is preparing you to see God greater than you did before. I need you to get that in your spirit. Everything you're going through right now is trying to prepare you to see God greater than you did before. I know you're going through hell. I know you're frustrated. I know some of you unemployed. I know some of you are in broken relationships. I know you're not happy. I know you're depressed. But let me tell you something. God is using what you're going through right now. So he can show you who he really is. And I believe God brought you here tonight. Because you were at the end of your faith rope. Yeah. Yeah. Who am I talking to right now? Don't play with me. Who am I talking to right now? You have been struggling. And it feels like you are about to just let that thing go. And say, you know, I'm tired of living a life with God. I'm tired of this. I'm going back home. I'm leaving LA. I'm getting my butt out to church. Some of you came here tonight. Just to say, maybe God 
Bible speak to me tonight? Me. And I'm here to tell you, you're in the right place. You're in the right place, my brother. God's going to extend your rope tonight. Believe that and receive that. Just because you were obedient and showed up, he's going to extend your rope. You think you're at the end of it. You're at the end of your limited rope. And he's about to give you a rope that is never ending. That will keep allowing you to go higher and higher in him. Thus saith your God. Amen. 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 All right, we got to get to the word. We got to get to the word. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, dear Lord, for all that you're doing in our life. God, thank you for being with us. Thank you for giving us an opportunity, Lord, to be in your presence. Yes. We might aspire to be in the presence of many people in this town, but let us never thirst their presence more than your presence. Yes, yes. Thank you for being with us tonight. Open up our heart, open up our mind, and open up our ears so we can fully receive all that you have for us. In the name of Jesus, we all say. Amen. Amen, amen. It is, uh, it's, oh, man, listen, when we get together to sin, I'm telling you, this, this literally feels like the Underground Railroad. I mean, I, I, <laughs> not to mention all the bricks in the wood and all that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, but I mean, I, I literally feel like this is just like that underground movement where we show up, we, we praise God, we get a word, we stay connected, and we keep moving. And the testimonies that keep coming out of this Bible study continue to blow my mind. And the fact that you all are here, that you came to downtown, you fought through traffic, amen, hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> Woo, you said, I'm getting there, I'm going to get there. And I need you to know that the God you serve honors a sacrifice. Amen. He honors a sacrifice. And when I begin to think about God, what do you want me to talk about tonight is the second to last ascend of this year. Um, amen. We, we, we almost made it through the year. Amen. Are you excited to be in November? Anybody excited to be in November like you? You made it this year, right? That's a blessing. And as I was going through my notes, there were two scriptures that kept coming up. And I began to delve deeper and I said, okay, God, there's two different translations. Um, which one do you want me to, to teach from? And his response was both. I said, God, what are you talking about? I don't, you know, you, you choose one text, one version, and that's what you do. So I'm going to do something I've never done before, uh, you know, with the hope of being obedient to what I believe I was instructed to do, which is we're going to go through the same text tonight, one from one version, and the second part from the second version, is that all right? All right. Okay, cool. Um, it is a very simple text. Many of you guys know it. And I'm going to read from the New International Version first. And it says this, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. As a what? A living yeah. sacrifice. Holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform. Do what? Do not conform. To the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Praise the Lord. This is a text that motivates me and haunts me all at the same time. Because I don't know about you, but there have been many times during this year when I have tried to discern, God, what is your will? Yes. Who am I talking to right now? Have you been there? How, how many of there are right here, there right now? You're trying to figure out, God, what are you doing? Well, what is going on? Anybody got a God, what is going on? Wave in the house tonight. To God, what is going on? What are you doing? Why do you have me here? What is your plan? I think that so much time we spend trying to figure out God, what are you doing? Yes, yes. 
Because God's ways are so strange and peculiar, it is very hard to figure him out. And what I find is that God sometimes will speak through impressions. And if we don't have our mind clear, we won't have the ability to know what it is he's doing. Yeah, yeah. When you look at who wrote this text, Paul is urging the Romans after 11 chapters of theology pretty much. He gives them a, 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 a basically a, 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 a charge of how to live. He didn't say... I request that you would. I ask you to consider. Would you please for a moment think about this? He said, I urge you. There's an urgency. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but you have spent 11 months procrastinating your way out of your purpose. There's an urgency for you to get your life back in order tonight. 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 There's an urgency for you to get your life right tonight, yeah. this very moment. Because the truth of the matter is, if we had the opportunity to take a camera and follow you, or I were to screen the footage that the angels have already captured of your life this year. Yes. Oh, wow. We would clear this place out real quick. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Come on now. Don't play with me, sin. Don't play. Oh, no, you want to come in the house? Oh, no, I praise God. I, I am a good Christian. Yeah, okay, let me start screening the footage. Let me put the screen down. Turn on the HD projector. Huh? Huh? Yeah, yeah, see, see, so many of us, we can live life, you know, in the master shop. Yeah, that's good. But can you live life? On the close-up. <laughs> Can your life withstand HD scrutiny? Oh, you know when you have a low-res image from afar, it looks beautiful. But when you say, no, punch in a little bit more. Punch in a little bit more. Either that image gets pixelated or it can handle the close-up. I ask you tonight, I said, can you handle the close-up? How are you living tonight? You spent 11 months procrastinating having excuses for why you couldn't do what he had already told you you were supposed to do. I have an urgency for you to get in line with your God tonight. Not tomorrow, not as a New Year's resolution. How do you know the New Year is planned for you? Come on. Anybody know? No, seriously, because if you know the New Year is planned for you, can, you, can we talk after service, please? I want to know how you know. Because the Bible, I, I says tomorrow, the Bible I read says tomorrow is not even promised. Yeah. Yeah. So why are you worrying about tomorrow? Focus on what God is doing today. I have an urgency. Because what I know, the sooner we actually get on the page that God has ordained for us to be on, the better our life will be. If you think you have seen God and you have something to praise him for. What you have to praise him for is only a portion of the God he wants to show himself to be to you. So if you think he's been good already, when you really align your life with what he's called you to do, you ain't seen nothing about how good your God really is. I, I am here to tell you that this idea of living for God and submitting your life is one of the hardest things you can do because it requires not only 100% focus, but determination. You've got to be determined to live for God. It's not like you get up in the morning and decide, oh, yes, yes, this is easy. I'm living for God. I'm going to coast. Are you kidding me? We get up for God. The first thing we want to do, we don't even want to thank him. We don't want to be like, thank you, Jesus, for another day. We want to get up, and then we put on the worry for the day. Mm. Oh, come on, y'all. Sin, don't play with me. You know I'm telling the truth. Yes. We put on the worry. I got to go back into this office today. Mm. I got to fight with these people I don't even like today. I got to go look for a job today. Mm, I got to go on another audition today. I don't even think I'm going to get in no way. I've been auditioning all year. I haven't gotten out one job, and God told me I'm supposed to be the head, not the tail. Why am I not getting an audition? 
We get up in the morning and we put on the worry instead of putting on the determination that even if I don't feel like it, I'm going to live for him. Stop worshiping your feelings. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. okay. Can I say that? Yeah. Stop worshiping your feelings. Your feelings betray you at every turn. Every turn. This, this is why I believe a lot of marriages break up. You made a commitment at the altar. There are some days you may not feel like it. But you honor the commitment because in honoring it, it's a sacrifice. There are some days you don't feel like being for God. But when you take your feelings and put them on the altar and present them as a sacrifice. Mm. We live in a culture and a community that does not value sacrifice. No, it's almost like get what you can, get it while you can, get as much as you can. And, and sacrifice for what? Yes, yes. Paul says, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. When I looked up what sacrifice meant, it said this. The act of giving up something that you want. The act of giving up something you want. Now, if I told you that you needed to give up an audition because we needed to go down here around the corner of Skid Row mm. and help some people, Come on. how many of you would make the sacrifice? Mm. Yeah, you say it now, uh-huh. Mm. I'm going to test you. I'm going to hold an audition for my next movie. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Yep, let's see. Let's see. Uh-huh. Y'all say, oh yeah, of course I would. My point is, are you allowing what you want to dictate what you do? Or are you checking what you want with God to determine if it's what he wants for you? All right, that's good. You get that? Because what we do is we take what we want. I want to be an entertainer. I want to get this job. Yes, yes. I want to get this scholarship. I want this relationship. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. But when was the last time you said, I might want it, but I'm not ready for it right now? When was the last time you acknowledged in yourself, I'm not ready for what I really want right now? So instead of trying to push myself to the front, I'm going to sit back in the back and observe until God prepares me and tells me that I'm ready. God wants me to get deeply inside your spirit and ask you, what do you really want? And is what you really want tethered to him? I am not telling you nothing that I have not lived. When I came to this town at the age of 18 years old, I've seen a whole lot go on in this town. And there have been many times where I had to ask myself, do I want the success and am I wanting it more than I'm wanting a relationship with God? Yeah. Yeah. For real, can I be honest with you? Yeah. Yeah. Because the two aren't necessarily synonymous. You can want the success and you can want the networking and you can want the progress that this industry can bring more so than you want to spend time with God. And if I could have a moment to submit to you, then maybe your desire for this has been greater than your desire for him this year. Yes, sir. And then the reason why our feelings are like the stock market is because we value who we hang out with. We value who validates us when that validation isn't tethered to how he has already validated us. So you want to know, some days, have you ever been, yo, I'm telling you what I know, what I live. You know, when you're down with the certain people and then people that validate you and make you feel good about yourself, you wake up in the morning, you're like, yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, I got my call returned last night. You know, I sent a text. Yo, I got my email returned because we are basing our value with the groups 
and the, the associations that we have, and heaven forbid, we go and check that value system and they don't call us right back. And they don't email right back. And they don't text right back. And then we begin to question, well, who am I and what am I? And our whole mood gets affected. Who am I talking to right now? Don't play me like you don't know what I'm talking about. Our whole mood gets affected because the people that we put value in now have the control to adjust the knob of our feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd like to submit to you the idea that maybe the enemy is using certain people to keep your frequency of your feelings so erratic that you never plug into uh, to God. Oh, that's good. Do you catch that? Yeah. This is why you have to be very careful about who you date. See, this is not in my notes, but I have to tell you what God told me to tell you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Lord, help me, Jesus. <laughs> okay, you got to be careful with who you date. Um, I'm going to say it one more time because I don't think that, that anointing on that really got in your spirit. You got to be careful who you date. <laughs> Now, you might be dating somebody right now that's sitting next to you. Yeah. And you didn't really bet that situation. It's okay. You ain't got to, you ain't got to clap too loud. Amen. Just say amen in your spirit right here. In your spirit. <laughs> but here's why you have to be careful who you date. Because when you open up yourself and your heart to that vulnerability to whomever you're sharing time and space with, you give them access to adjust how you feel at any given moment. Yes. And if you are allowing somebody who's not tethered to him to get behind the control room of your heart, you wonder why you're so depressed and can't get happy and can't find joy because somebody you're connected to is not connected to him. You got to be careful who you get. Yeah, because I've been there before, being single, trying to be saved. Because you know I say trying to be, because some days we act real safe, some days we act like we ain't. Don't play with me, Sam. Don't play. Some days we just want to act like, no, I'm saved. I mean, saved from what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, right? Because here's the thing. What happens is that in dating, we see what we want. And we can become so obsessed over what we want, we will pursue it at any cost. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Even our good judgment. Yeah. Preach. This is why, as we get deeper into the text, Paul makes a link between the clarity of mind and deciphering God's will. Yeah. I argue that when you date the wrong person, you put yourself in a situation where it becomes very hard to hear his will. I do believe that the area we don't look enough at in life is how we date and who we date. Do you realize that who you end up marrying affects the course of your life? But we have no scrutiny on how we date. Dating has the greatest impact on our mental clarity, I would say sometimes even more than career. Because when you allow someone into your spirit, they drive you crazy. Y'all yeah. don't act like you ain't never been in love before. <laughs> when you're in love with somebody, they can just say boo. <laughs> and it can mess you up for the whole day. Why you say boo like that? <laughs> why you say boo like that? Come on now, why you? I mean, I thought we were just cool. Yeah. But you had to go and say boo like that? Was that like a boo, boo? Or like a boo, like boo, like my boo, right? That's good. Come on, y'all. You know I'm telling the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. That means you have to give up something that you want in exchange for something else. And I argue 
that the text is trying to tell us that if we would give up what we want in exchange for his will, we would find ourselves in a better place to be able to decipher what God wants us to do. Present your body as a living sacrifice. How well have you been presenting your body to God this year? You ain't got to raise your hand because I, I don't want to put you out like that. <laughs> uh-huh. Again, I want you to just go on the inside on this. Just go on the inside. All right, just go on the inside. No, no, seriously, because here's the thing. In order to manage the destiny that's coming for you, it's going to require discipline. So if you aren't accustomed to sacrificing, you are basically showing yourself unqualified to manage the destiny that you are so desperate for. It takes discipline. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need to get more discipline. <laughs> you need to get more discipline. You, you, I'm good. You need to get more discipline. You need to get more discipline. When you talk about a living sacrifice, you see in the Old Testament, usually what would happen, you know, they would take, you know, an animal, they would sacrifice the animal, right? And obviously when Jesus came, Jesus was the sacrifice, and only we no longer had to make those kind of sacrifices. So it's very peculiar that Paul is telling us that we have to make ourselves a living sacrifice continually. How often do you sacrifice? And where is your sacrifice? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, but no, you know, I sacrifice in my mind when I pray. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh-huh, right, right. No, seriously, seriously. You got to start thinking about your life. Where's my sacrifice? Where's my sacrifice? Where am I sacrificing in my time, in my money, in my career, in my desires? Where are the sacrifices? I try to look at my own life and say, God, please don't let me get to a place of success where I, I, I lose perspective on sacrifice. Oh, yeah, because see, when God starts to bless you, we begin to think of our blessings as, oh, I no longer need to do those things that got me the blessings. Anybody ever been blessed and that ever came across your mind like, hey, I, I'm, I've already passed over all of the, the steps to get here. Now I'm good. I ain't got to keep sacrificing the way I was sacrificed when I was broke. I don't have to keep sacrificing the way I was sacrificing when I was hungry. I'm good now. Paul said, I don't care how much money you make. I don't care where you live. Present your body as a living sacrifice so it is holy and acceptable. This is your proper Worship. Now, I know many of you come to a sin and you love the praise and worship that Dr. Holly Carter leads us in. But I need to tell you that worship goes well beyond how you sin. Amen. We have allowed the church to tell us praise and worship is what happens when we lift holy hands and we sing. I'm here to tell you worship is how you live. How well you're worshiping God determines the quality of your lifestyle. Is your life a melody to him? Or to someone else? <laughs> good. Uh, worship is how you live. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Am I honoring God with my choices? Am I honoring God with how I live? These are the questions you must ask yourself. Are you honoring him with the choices you make day in and day out? This is real worship. The text doesn't talk about singing. The text doesn't talk about writing a melody. The text says when you present yourself as a sacrifice, now we can talk about worship. Mm -hmm. You want to worship God? Get your life together. Get your life together. Yeah, I said it. Get it together. Why? Because the sooner you get it together, 
the sooner you're going to see what God wants to do for you. I'm here to tell you, you've been praying for God all year. And God said, listen, if you only knew what I have for you, if you only knew. But right now, you don't want me. You just want it. Uh-huh. What we want, we want it. And we make so many choices to get it. Oh, I want that movie. I want that TV show. I want that manager. I want that representation. I want that deal. I want, I want, I want, I want. Okay, cool. But is what you want. Have you gone before him to say, God, is this what you want for me? Lord, do you want this deal? Lord, do you want this audition? Lord, do you want me to get this project? Lord, do you want me to get this representation? Lord, do you want me to date this person? Lord, I know what I want, but what do you want? And Lord, I'm not going to move until I know what you want me to do. Present your bodies as a living, breathing sacrifice. And what I love about a sacrifice, there's a blessing attached to it. You know, I hope my buddy doesn't mention, mind me, give me all. Y'all, you know I keep it real, so I tell you everything. <laughs> Anybody comes to the saying, you know, I, I'm pretty honest, am I right? Yeah. Amen. So, um, my buddy Christopher, who I've known for, you know, um, 20 years since I've been in L.A., he hits me up and says, hey, I have an opportunity to uh, go in and pitch this project at Lifetime. And he said, um, you know, would you, would you want to be in on it? And like, hey, if, if you're a part of it, it might help me get it done. Now, I said, um, man, you know, I just produced Miracles from Heaven with Jennifer Garner and Queen Latifah and Sony made that movie. And, you know, we get paid a good amount of money to do those movies. And Lifetime, <laughs> you know, it's cool. I'm not knocking Lifetime, but, but Lifetime's not Sony. It's not Sony. And, you know, I'm trying to build my company. I'm trying to build my profile. And I want to be associated with feature films. But my friend said, if you would be a part of it, I believe it would help me get it done. Yeah. So I had a choice. Do I put what I want and how I want people to think of me? I'm talking to somebody right now. Do I put that over and above my friendship? Yo, dude, I can't do that. It's not a good look for me. I'm sorry, I, I can't help you in that way because how are people going to perceive what I'm doing in features if I'm messing over at life? Look, mm -mm, nah, I can't do that, man. How many times do we make decisions based upon wanting all of this at the expense of friendships? At the expense of family? At the expense of integrity? At the expense of character? How many times do we choose people's perceptions of what we think they're going to think about us if we do this or not over what we have believed and what God is telling us what to do? How many times? So, after a moment of being in the flesh, I said, yes. I'll go in and do it. I'll do it. And it was funny because, you know, it, look, I'm being honest. Am I good? Am I cool? Okay, cool. All right. So I was making sure, you know, I'm just making sure my buddy's here. Just making sure. So, so, you know, he, had, you know, I've been real busy, right? So he had reached out a few times like, hey, let's get together and, and talk about the pitch. And I'm like, dude, I got you. Don't worry. We're going to be good. I promise we're going to be good. So it got to the point where we didn't get a chance to really meet me until a couple hours before the pitch. But I had done my homework and he had done his homework and we got together and I said, okay, here's how we're going to do this. You're going to say this, you're going to say this, I'm going to say this, we're going to go in, we're going to do this, we're going to keep it like this, and boom, we're going to leave it over for questions. Cool? Cool. We went in yesterday, met for like 45 minutes to an hour, they called today. We're going to have business affairs start negotiating the deal. I articulate this to show you that there are blessings tethered to the sacrifice. Please don't allow your perception to limit what God is trying to do because God is going to wreck your idea of what you think it should be in favor of what it really is if you would honor what really matters. Listen, let me tell you something. Friendships and familyships are eternal. This business 
business is going to burn. I don't know if you know that it is going to ultimately burn. But the people you plug into in his name are eternal. Please get that in your spirit. And stop allowing what I want. I want this and I want that. When was the last time you checked in on your, on your friend? Wow. I'm just so busy. Oh, really? You're too busy to check in with the same person that prayed with you when you were going through? Yeah. Yeah. Present your body as a living sacrifice of sin. Start sacrificing your time. When was the last time you just went and had a conversation with somebody you didn't want nothing from them? Yeah. Yeah. We spend so much time strategizing and, and networking and trying to figure out how we can get our way to the top that we do it at the expense of taking care of those who really love us, who really care for us, and will be there for us no matter what happens in this town or not. Please don't allow your taste and desire to be so prominent in this business that you do it at the expense of taking time to let people know you love them, Amen. that you care about them. It could be a two second text. Love you. I'm busy, but I love you. <laughs> Thinking about you. Praying for you. We spend more time on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook interacting with people we don't even know than we do with the people that really care about us. Yeah. Yeah. Present your body as a living, breathing sacrifice. I've got to get back to my text. Woo. Okay, present your body as living, breathing, sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform. Do not conform. Conform means to do what other people do. To behave in a way that is accepted by most people. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. How well are you fitting into the garment of the world? How well are you putting on the world's coat? Huh? Do you fit in so easily with your friends in this industry that you may even think about it? Do not conform. Don't just do what somebody else wants you to do because they want you to do it. When you are spiritually minded, when you are God minded, you have to check what somebody else is telling you to do with whether or not it's what God is telling you to do. And I don't care what your agent says. I don't care what your manager says. I don't care. Listen, let me tell you. If God has told you not to do something, don't let somebody that is not connected to him rationalize you out of what he told you to do. And if he told you to do it, then no matter what conventional wisdom says, I argue you better do it. You better do it. Because here's the, here's the reality. God's ways are, are so straight. If I, listen, if I, if I told you that I understood how God fully operated, then you could never believe anything else I would say after that. <laughs> all right? His ways are mysterious. So we are all in the same boat trying to figure out, God, how is that going to work? But what I have found is that God continuously defies my conventional wisdom yeah, yeah. on what I think he's going to do. So I submit to you, don't conform, don't fit in so easily that you don't even think about it. When was the last time you said, hey, no, I'm not going to go out tonight. Y'all go, I'm not going. When was the last time you went out, you hung out and said, no, I'm not going to drink. Mm -hmm. You can't get no amens on that. It's cool. It's cool. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, and here's why I say this. Because at the end of the day, what the text is talking to us about is keeping our mind clear. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. That means to be changed in a positive way by the renewing of your mind. And here's what I'm here to tell you, that if you don't practice sobriety, how can you keep your mind renewed? If you don't practice discretion in what you eat, how can you keep your mind clear? Now, you know, growing up, it's like, hey, you know, I didn't drink, I, I didn't smoke, I, I didn't do any of those things. But, but listen, listen, put out a piece of cake. Listen, there was a time my mom, she, she brought a whole cheesecake. 
Yes. And put it in the back of the refrigerator. I went in that thing, I ate the whole thing. Like, you know how you like try to make the, the rim look like it's still there? I went in and ate the whole back of the pie. And when she took it out, the whole thing was gone except for the rim because I wanted her to be able to like look and say, okay, it's still there, right? You know, you know. So this idea of sugar, I was like, yo, I can, hey, I can eat what I want, you know. As long as I work out, I can eat what I want. Mm-hmm. Nobody else thinks like that. Nobody thinks like that. Nobody, right? Uh-huh. I'm about to bust some of y'all fitness experts right now. Oh, I can eat what I want. I can, hey, I'm working out in the morning. I'm going to eat what I want. Okay, okay. But here's what I have found. Whether or not you can work off whatever calories you choose to digest is irrelevant. Here is the truth. What we eat impacts how we think. Do you know why they call it the itis? <laughs> After Bible study, anybody don't know what the itis? Just ask somebody. They can tell you that. <laughs> they call it the itis because the blood in your body goes from your head to digest all the food you just ate. Yes. And and and, it, and and what it does in exchange is puts you in a, a situation where you got to go to sleep. Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> So there is a direct connection between what we eat and the quality of our thinking. Oh yeah. This is why it is very important to begin to make your, your diet a sacrifice. Just because you can eat something doesn't mean you should eat something. I'm talking to somebody right now. I'm talking to somebody right now. So many times... When I look at what I eat, I'm trying to do better and eat things that will keep my mind clear. Because when I, I trick myself and say, oh, I can eat that little piece of cake. I can eat that cookie. I can eat that piece of fried chicken. Ain't nobody eating no fried chicken here. I know I'm just the only one talking about it. I can eat that piece of pizza. What it does is it clouds my thoughts. You ever got home after work and said, okay, here's what I'm going to do when I get home. You know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And then you're so hungry. You eat something that you know you shouldn't have eaten, and next thing you know, you can't do nothing that you said you were getting ready to do because you laid out on the couch. Who am I talking to? Anybody recognize what I'm talking about? Right? It is so important in order to keep your mind renewed, be transformed by the renewing. What does renewing mean? I-N-G means continual. It means it's an action. It doesn't mean I renewed my mind, now I'm good. I have to continually practice renewing my mind, keeping my mind fresh, keeping my mind clear. Why? So that I can hear what his will is. Mm -hmm. This is why there are some times I get so fed up with myself over this thing right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are times where I'm literally sitting there, why am I scrolling mindlessly on Facebook like I cannot stop? Who am I talking to right now? Just scroll, 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 scroll. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? I need to go to Scrollers Anonymous, please. Help me, please. I cannot seem to stop the scrolling. <laughs> Good. And my mind just gets filled with junk and all these sponsored posts and all this stuff. Most of the stuff ain't even true. You yeah. say, oh, really? That's happening? And yeah. you click on it, it ain't even a real link, right? Good. Because you know how it is. We pick up our phone and say, okay, God just gave me a word. I'm going to my notes. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Who am I talking to right now? Free. I'm going to my notes. I'm going. Going to the notes. <laughs> oh man, I got one response on Twitter. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, let me check Instagram. Yeah. Oh man, look at that. Oh yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Right? And the next thing you know, it's like, what, 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 what was I gonna write down again? And it's gone. Yeah. And then we're like, man, I gotta remember. Here's why I bring this up. There are some ideas that God has dropped in your spirit. 
that are so powerful and can help direct you in the, in the area he wants you to go. And the enemy will use the, 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 the smallness of an act to get us distracted. To get us delayed from putting down the very thought that might have been the key to delivering the destiny we've been praying for. And you say, well, Brother Devon, man, no, come on. I'm like, listen, the enemy will use whatever he can to get us off track. And I find that all the scrolling and all the checking and all the stuff clutters my mind. Who am I talking to right now? Clutters my mind. I, I get to the point where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to have to put myself on restricted time. Okay? Where it's like, there are going to be certain times where I can, you look at my phone and do all that. And then other times where I'm letting it alone because I don't want to take everything God is doing and throw it down the wayside because I'm so addicted to scrolling. Yeah. Do you realize how much time we spend like this? Yeah. Like this? So much time, if we spent as much time thinking and planning and strategizing over the word that God has given us as we do like this, we would be in a whole different position than we are in right now. I promise you this. I promise you this. This is why sometimes I go to church, I'll even bring this in. Yes. Yeah. I leave it in the car. Why? Because you know what? I want to meet Jesus today. I don't want no distractions. I don't need to tweet nothing from the pastor. I'll tweet it when I get back in my car. I just, why? Because I need to stay focused. Yeah. I need to stay focused. Please understand part of the transforming of the renewing of your mind is being focused. I need everybody here right now. You got to go home and do a focus inventory. What is keeping you distracted right now? You got to get your mind back. Get your mind back. Turn to me and say, you got to get it back. You got to get it back. Whoever has your mind, wherever your mind is, you have got to go get it. Because when you have your mind, this is my favorite part of the text, when you have your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. This is why it's so important to keep your mind clear. Now listen, you're grown. You can do whatever you want. If you choose to smoke your night away, that's on you. If you choose to drink your night away, that's on you. But part of what the, what the Bible is saying is that when you keep your mind clear, you will be able to test and approve. Amen. There are some things that you do when you are not sober that are so foolish that when you're sober, you say, how did I do that? Because you didn't allow your mind to be clear enough to test and approve that what you were getting ready to do and who you were getting ready to do it with was foolish. I'm talking to somebody right now. But then when you get back in your right mind, you're like, did I do that? This is why it's so important. Make sure you take care of this so that you can test and approve. See, there's some things that God is saying, listen, you don't even need prayer on that one. Just think about it. <laughs> Am I right? You, you, you don't even need, to, you don't even need to, to go into the spirit on that. Just think about it. So you want to go out with somebody who you don't know, who you've not checked out, you don't even know where they go to church, you don't even know where they work, you don't even know how many people they, they you don't know what's going on, but they look good. <laughs> and they smell good. Yes. You ain't prayed to ask me anything. <laughs> And then you're months in the situation, you're so caught up, and then you find out they're dating five other people. And then you want to come cry to me. You didn't even need to, to get into all of that if you had just thought about it beforehand. Your wisdom, the wisdom I gave you, the common sense I, I put in your spirit would have told you, I got to give this a little more time. Before. I open myself up emotionally and spiritually. I got to give this a little more time. Let me see if this person really is who they say they are. 
Evaluate, test, and approve. Start using your mind. Evaluate, ask questions. You want to be successful in this next year? Start asking questions. How do you do this? And how do you do that? And how did this work? Whenever I have come across somebody that I admired or that was more successful than me, the number one thing that I would do, I wouldn't ask them for, for you know, hey, can I meet with you? Can I get your number? No, I ask them a question. Information. Yeah. Yeah. Begin to test and approve. Evaluate. Yes. Evaluate. Please get this in your spirit. You've got to begin to do more evaluation. Yeah. Research. Prayer. Thought. Test and approve. It didn't say you'd be able to go to, to God. It says you would be able to test and approve what his will is. Now, I read a book that was very, very fascinating that gave me a concept that I thought was really interesting I want to share with you. When it says this, it says, his will, it says uh, test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, the book that I read basically categorized three different versions of God's will. There's the good will, which is like his C plan. There's his pleasing will, which is his B plan. Mm -hmm. And then there's his perfect will, which is his A plan. And depending on how obedient you are, determines which plan you receive in life. Mm -hmm. And I said, I remember after reading that book, I said, you know what, Lord, I want your perfect plan. I want the perfect plan. I don't want the A, the B plan. I don't want the C plan. I want the perfect will, Lord. I want your will the way you intended it before I was even born. So if I have to live in a certain way that people call peculiar and people call strange and people talk about it because they don't understand me, then let them talk about me, Lord, because I want the perfect will for my life. And this is why as a, as a man, you know, growing up, being in this town, I've been in this town for 20 years. When I was in my early 20s, I said, listen, I, I am not going to sleep with a woman until I get married again. I'm not going to sleep with a woman again until I get married. I ain't been married. I've only been married once. I want to clarify. I'm going to let you all understand what I'm saying. I ain't sleep with a woman again until I get married. Now, this is like when I was 23 years old. 23? 23. In L.A. Yeah. Working for Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Got a degree. Making good money. Yeah. No, I ain't sleeping with you. Is something wrong with you? No, I want God's perfect will. Do you not find me attractive? No, I want God's perfect will. Is something wrong with your sexuality? No, I want God's perfect will. <laughs> So either you want his will with me. <laughs> oh, oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. Because see, you want to compromise the other way. I'm here to tell you when you're committed to his perfect will, you won't get blessed just by being associated with him. You, you, you won't see God. See, when you determine how you're going to date and you stick to it, the person that you're dating has no choice but to get a greater glimpse of God because they aren't doing things they normally would do so they have no choice but to see things a little bit more clearly. Woo! Y'all, I'm sorry. I'm just giving you what God told me to give you. Perfect will. Your body is a living sacrifice. Now, when I was 23 and I made this vow, I did not know. I did not know. <laughs> I did not know. I wasn't getting married for, you know, another 10 years. <laughs> I got married at 34. I didn't know. So, when you say you're going to be about God, he's going to test you. He's going to test you. How bad do you want my will? How bad? Are you willing to go beyond what you think is possible? See, what I found out with God is, is we think we have a limit. We'll make a commitment. I can only do X, right? You know, like when you go to the gym, hey, I can only run for a mile. God says, oh, really? Okay, cool. Get on the treadmill. Cool. And on the treadmill life, God says, mm, on this lap, you're running two. Well, Lord, I can only run a mile. Oh, really? How you know? I made you. I know what you can do. You can actually run three, 
But I'm going to go easy on you and have you run too. I'm going to have you go beyond what you think is possible. When you make a determination to live for God's will, he's going to push you beyond what you think is possible. And here's what I know. So much of what has happened in my life, and people talk about me all the time, and oh, he's this and done all that. Let me tell you something. What God is doing in my life and the incredible blessings that I see every day are directly related to the discipline and sacrifice that is required to live his perfect will. Am I perfect? No. Do I receive his perfect will and pursue it every day? You better believe it. I don't want God's less than his best. I want his best. Amen. Whatever you intended, Lord, that's what I want, and I'm going to pursue it. Now, when you make up your mind that you're going to do it God's way, people are going to talk negatively about you. Would you stop being so just sensitive and temperamental and get your feelings all hurt? When you're doing what God wants you to do, they're going to talk. They talked about Jesus. Why wouldn't they talk about you? When people start to talk, would you please use that as evidence that you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing? Please. Whenever you decide you're going to live for God, that's when people start coming in your life. Amen. Wanting to mess it up. Old, old flames come up and start texting you and say, wait a minute. Uh, I didn't even know you still had the number. Uh, uh, and, and let me show you how, how, detached you, how attached you still are. See, there's some people you stop dating, but when they text you, their name still pops up. So what does that mean? They still saved in your phone. If you had some real faith that you were really detached, delete them. Let it go. Ooh. Man, that was a word for somebody right there. I felt that. I felt it. <laughs> I felt it. You, you said, Devon, why you got to say that, Devon? Why you got to say that? I felt it. Because you leave them in the, in the phone. Oh, I didn't even know they were still in my phone. Yeah, uh-huh. Don't be afraid to choose God's best for your life. And when you choose it, you have to practice it every day. And it is going to be a sacrifice. If, as a man, I had done everything that I wanted to do, when I was making my commitment, if I did everything I wanted to do, if I went out with every woman I wanted to go out with, I wouldn't be here right now. I had to make a sacrifice. Lord, here's the man I want to be. And I'm not going to allow my flesh and the desires of my flesh to get in the way of who I want to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Men, yeah, we, we got to do better in this area. We got to do better in this area. We have to. And I'm not going to I'm not going to try to qualify it. I'm not going to try to, you know, say, oh, yeah, we're men. No, no, no. God made us men because he knows we can handle the weight of this whole thing. Whatever we put our minds to do, we can do it if we make the choice. Same go for the women. You can you can do what you want. You can do it. But you got to decide what you want. And can I be real honest with you before we close? And I'm going to read that last text and we just, we'll use that as the, as the, as the conclusion. <laughs> Since we're being very honest and we're all adults, when you make up in your mind that you are not choosing his perfect will, don't get upset and depressed yeah. over the prayers that you don't think he's answering. Good. Can I be honest? Yeah. Because see what happens is we only want to present him a sacrifice in certain areas but then we want the fullness of the blessings, the fullness of the answered prayers but we're only giving a sacrifice in certain areas. So how are you giving only 50% and you want 100 if you were dealing in a business deal and your partner that was going in on the business only put in 10% but wanted 20 back, you say, no, you're crazy. Your math is off. You'll get the percentage back that you put in. So why is it that we go to God 
intercede and pray when we ain't giving him 100% of our life, but we get mad when he don't give us 100% of what we're asking for. And here's the truth. Since we're, we're adults, if you are not going to do it his way, own it. Own it. Own it. Don't make excuses for it. Say, you know what? Right now, I am choosing not to live God's way. Do you have enough boldness to do that? Do you? Because what happens is we choose not to live his way by our actions, but, but when we speak, oh, no, I'm doing it God's way. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Oh, yeah, okay, wait. We're getting ready to screen your movie. Tell us the truth. <laughs> Tell us the truth. What are we getting ready to see? Why is God asking me to put it so plainly to you? Because I have no doubt that in the plain light of day, it will convict you to give more of yourself to him. And I promise you, the more you give to him, the more you will see in return. I believe that God has brought us all here so that we can sharpen each other. We can go deeper in the word. So that not only will the purpose over our life get manifest, but we actually will be able to manage it. Yeah. I'm not trying to you know, tell you guys all these tricks and tips and all this kind of stuff just so you can get what God has. What I found, the giving isn't so much the issue, it's the managing. Yeah. And if I haven't lived in a way before I get it, I will squander it when I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to see you just get a blessing. I want to see you thrive with the blessing. I want to see you, you know, you know, take a blessing and, and build from the blessing. But if you're choosing not to get his very best, it won't happen. And I'll read this and we're going to close. The Message Bible says this, same text, different way to look at it. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. This maturity is key to managing all he has for you. I believe he has brought us here to November and allowed us to have this moment to get us back in line with who he is and start to make healthier choices in our life. And I define a healthy choice in this moment by choosing to live for him in the area of your time, your talent, uh, your gifts, your, your, your love, your dating life. Are you putting him first? It is a sacrifice because there are things that we want we want more money. We want more position. But sometimes we say, God, if you're not in it, I'd rather have you than to have it. I believe this idea of sacrifice is critical to long-term success. And the more we begin to practice it, the more peace we will have. Because I know that when you live in his will, as hard as it may be, there is peace and clarity right there in the center of it. When God was preparing us to get together, the two things he told me to really pray about, career and relationships. The two areas where we get the most depressed, the most distressed, and the most distracted. Who am I talking to right now? Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Am I talking to? Come on, let's be honest right now. Career and relationships. 
And, and God sent me here tonight to let you know. Don't worry about the job. I want to just talk to career for a minute. Don't worry about the job. He said, I sent you out here because I already had every single opportunity that you would need planned for you. He said, I've already got a plan. So while it seems like you are searching in the dark and you're looking, God, where are you and what is it? He says, if you would just align your life to me, I will be a compass that will reveal all of the things I've already planned. I need you to know you already have the job. You already have the promotion. You already have the role. I, you hear I didn't say audition. You already have the role. You already have the deal. You already have the script. You already have the representation. You already have it. God says, I didn't send you out here just to leave you. I sent you out here because I have a plan. So you've been spending so much anxiety over this career piece and where am I going and what's going on and God wants me to let you know, stop worrying. Amen. He knows you need money. He knows where you live. Yeah. He knows. It's only the 17th of November. The first ain't for a few more weeks. He got you. Come on somebody, he got you. He got you. He gonna take care of you, don't worry. Don't worry. But the key to receiving what he already has planned is to get up with intention every day and say, God, what would you have me to do? I might not be doing what I want to do, but there's a sacrifice. There's a sacrifice. Lord, I don't want to go in and do this, but Lord, for some reason, you've opened up a door for me to have this administrative job. I don't know why, but somehow I'm able to provide for myself. I'm able to have a place to get up and go and work. I don't necessarily like it, Lord. It's not exactly what I want to do, but for some reason you open up the opportunity. So let me honor you by managing what you've given me. He got your career already squared away. It's squared away. I need you to know it's squared away. The only thing that can damage it are the choices you make. I figured this out a long time ago. So God, you had all this stuff planned out for me? All this stuff? Yes, Devon, all of it. And the only one that could disrupt it is me. Me. I need you to receive what he already has for you. For those of you that have been struggling with your career, I need you to raise your hands right this very moment, right now. And if you've been really struggling, raise two hands. <laughs> Amen. Now, now, what I want you to do is many of you have your hands raised this way. Now, as God is trying to give you something, you can't receive it with your hand this way, can you? I want you to turn your hand. This way, when something falls, you can catch it. I need you to know what he has already planned is going to fall right here into your embrace of obedience. Right here into your hands of discipline. It's going to fall. Now what I want you to do is I want you to think about what you believe God has already told you is going to happen. I don't want you to think about what's standing in the way. I want you to think about what he said is already going to happen. Now I want you to visualize it falling into your hands right now. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you feel it? You need to know that, that the vision he's showing you right now is the road map that you've got to follow. And the reason why I have you with your hands like this because you have to have the faith to receive it and sometimes you must do something demonstrative that is a symbol of the faith that you have on the inside you may put your hands down for all of those with the career I, I, 
I, I just, what I see in you and, and what's coming to you, it's so exciting that, that you don't even, if you really knew what God's about to do, you would have so much joy right now, you, you, you couldn't stop smiling. That's why you see a smile on my face, because I see it. I see what he's doing. I see what's over your life. It's amazing. Now, before we close, anybody struggling in your dating life? Can we be honest? If you're struggling in your dating life, I need you to stand. I need you to stand. Stand so far. <laughs> hey, we're keeping it all the way real in the sand, amen? All the way real. All the way real. Okay, all right. You're not alone, amen? You're not alone. Amen, amen. Uh-oh, there's some, there's some real struggle over here. <laughs> amen. Now, now, why do I have you stand? Because in my experience, when it comes to this issue of dating, we privately struggle. Because we, we can't quite tell people what we're going through because we don't want them to talk about us. And sometimes we've made decisions in dating that we're embarrassed about. So if we told somebody what we actually did, we would might damage how they perceive us. So, so many times we struggle in dating silently. But there is power in standing and admitting, hey, I'm trying to figure this all out. I need to speak over you healing. 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 I need you to, I need you to know that, that he's healing you. That, that there have been some people that have damaged your heart, that have, have disregarded your feelings, and they have done major damage. They have devastated your spirit, and that's real. But I need you to know your God is saying, I want to heal you from past hurt. I want to heal you from wrong dating decisions. I want to heal you, so, so I need you to receive that healing tonight. And he also wants me to tell you Stop being so guilty over past decisions. Stop being guilty. We all, we all, we all have messed up in dating. We've messed up. And there have been some people, we have broken their heart. We have. While we have gotten our heart broken, we've also broken some hearts. And sometimes the guilt over breaking somebody's heart tears us up so much, we can't even be fully in the relationship we're in now. God wants me to let you know, stop being guilty. And if your heart has been broken, he will heal it. And if you've broken a heart, pray over it. He'll take care of it. If you are sincere, he'll take care of it. The third thing God wants me to impart to you, he's not a God of confusion. He's not a God of confusion. He's not a God of confusion. And he's not a God of dysfunction. If you are currently in a relationship and you spend more time arguing than you do agreeing, you need to put that relationship on the altar and say, God, what is your will here? What is your will? What is your will? Because I'm here to tell you we serve a God of peace. And if God is in your relationship, it doesn't mean you won't have arguments. But if you are arguing more than you're agreeing, you got to look at that. Now I want to speak to this, this other thing God is telling me, loneliness. Loneliness. If you are single, there is nothing wrong with you. 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 Nothing. You are right where God wants you to be. And what I love is that some of you, you're single, not by default, but by choice. By choice. And there's power in that choice. But some people in your life want to make you feel badly about choosing the right person at the right time. I don't want you to wear any of the shame that someone else tried to put on you. There ain't nothing wrong with you. And there's nothing wrong with God. He will deliver to you who he wants you to be with in his time. 
as long as you keep choosing him above all else. And while you're in this period of time, can I impart one last thing? Get excited for who he's going to bring. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. Get excited over who your God's getting ready to bring. He knows your needs, He knows your wants, He knows who will make the right person for you. So get excited and you better get yourself ready. You better get yourself ready. You've been overeating because you've been depressed. You've been mad. You've been angry. God said, you better get your life together. Because when I bring them, when I bring them, he wants your whole life to be ready to receive them. Please, please, please listen to me. Get your life together. Get it together. Get it together. Somebody said, what's wrong with you? What are you doing? I'm getting my life together. Why? Because God's getting ready to send them. What you mean? How do you know? Because I know. Because I know. Now listen to this. Last thing I'm going to say. We're going to pray. Last thing I'm going to say. Remove the stigma for how you want God to do it. What am I saying? Faith without works is dead. God might be working through eHarmony for you. He might be working through Match.com for you. He might be. He might still be on Black Planet, as far as you know. He might. Ah! What am I saying? What I'm saying is not telling God how he needs to bring the person to you. Be open to every avenue and see which one God will choose to bring you the right person. Do you receive that tonight? Do you receive it tonight? Give your God a hand praise. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, dear Lord, right now. I pray for healing in our dating life. I pray, dear Lord, for deliverance. I pray, dear Lord, for taking away the guilt. I pray, dear God, that you are preparing your children to send them the right partner at the right time. I want you to get back to their spirit that love works, that love conquers all. Let them not be jaded by breakups of the past but let them believe in the power of love, dear Heavenly Father. And I pray that you would bring it to them in only the way that you could. And until it comes, let them not be weary in well-doing, but let them hold on because they will reap a harvest if they do not give up. Do you receive that right now? Do you receive it right now? The hour is late. One last thing we got to do. We always open the doors of the church. Is there anybody here tonight that wants to give your life completely and fully to Jesus? Tonight, 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 tonight. You want to say, hey, Devon, Brother Devon, uh, Dr. Holly, uh, Robbie, I got to give my life to Christ tonight. If that is you, I want you to come up tonight, right now. Is that you? He's just working on the sound. Is that you? You coming up? Uh, are you just working on the sound? Right, okay, make a show. Hallelujah. Anybody else here tonight? Before we close, anybody here tonight? If you if you want to go all the way, say, you know what, Brother Devon, I got to reconnect in my life. I got to give my life back to God. Right now is your time. Right now is your time. I know the hour is late. I know, but guess what? This decision has no time clock. And here's what I mean by that. God may want to speak to you right now and is calling you to do something right now and he don't want you to put a time on it. You're saying, oh, I got to get out of here. But I'm asking you, are you secure in him? Anybody here tonight? Anybody here tonight? You want to make your decision tonight that I've got to give my life over. You got to raise your hand. I'll come get you. You can walk down front. I just want to make sure. We never like to close a Bible service. Amen? Amen. I'll come get you. I'll come get you. Amen. Come on. I'll come get you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Wait, anyone else? God bless you, my brother. Come on. Come on. A sin? You can do way better than that. 
You can do better than that. You better encourage your brothers and sisters. Encourage them in the Lord. Amen. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Come on, my brothers and sisters. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Yes. All right, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? What better way to give thanks than thank him with your life? Amen. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Who else? Who else? He's breaking. The anointing is breaking the yoke right now. Strongholds are being broken right now. Right now, they're being broken right now. Right now. Lives are being transformed right now. That's what a transformation is. It's a change in your life. There's no better way to transform your life than to give it over to Christ. I promise you. Is there anybody else before we close the service? Is there anybody else? Is there anyone else who wants to give yourself? Give yourself. Because you say, you know what? I need to give it all over because I've been so messed up lately. I need to give it over. Amen. 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 Who else? Who else? Who else? Before we close, who else? Who else? Who else? Hey. hey. Oh. Woo. We'll make room. I'll make room. Amen. Amen. Who else before we close this service? You say, you know what? I got to give it back to him. I got to give it back to him. And what's the end in my life? I got to give my life back to him. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my sister. Come on. God bless you. Amen. Who else? Who else? Who else? God bless you, my brother. Come on. Who else? 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 God bless you, my sister. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Who else? Who else? Who else? You are absolutely tired of living a life that you know is actually less than what he's calling you to live. You're tired of your habit of disobedience. And tonight you say, you know, I've got to make a dedication of my life, my body, my soul. I got to give it back to God. You might be on the sides, you might be in the back. I don't, wherever you are, God bless you, my sister. Who else? Who else? Why is this so important? Because this is how we get transformed. This is how we transform. By making a commitment. Before we close, is there anybody else here tonight? Before we close, it needs to... Ah, God bless you, my sister. God bless you. Amen. Who else? Who else? We're getting ready to close. Before we close, I'm going to have Dr. Holly Carter lead us in the sinner's prayer. 
but I want to articulate something to all of you who have come up to rededicate and to dedicate. The reason why I had you step up onto the stage, because we could have kept this down here, but I wanted to symbolize what God is doing with your life right now. <laughs> He's taking you to another platform. He's putting you on another level. And it is strong enough to support all that you are. You have to get this in your spirit. You don't have to compromise who you are to live on this next level of life. It is strong enough to support everything he's called you to be and believe. You don't have to be like somebody else. You don't have to pretend. God says, I'm calling you higher. And where you are standing now is strong enough to hold everything I've created you to be. He wants you to step out of where you were when you came here. That's what this is about. You're, you're, you're stepping out of it and you're stepping up into it. Did you get that? I'm stepping out of that depression. I'm stepping out of that doubt. I'm stepping out of that guilt. And I'm stepping into my future. This platform represents your future. Oh, oh, oh. You have no idea how heaven is celebrating right now. Yeah. Celebrating. Ascend, would you do me a favor? Would you play the role of an angel right now? And would you show them? You are powerful. You are anointed. You are talented. You are amazing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on in the name. Father, we thank you tonight. I should have lift your hands. Father, we thank you tonight for your son Jesus. God, you said it, that if we confess with our mouth yes, and if we believe in our heart yes, Lord. that your son Jesus died for our sins, yes, Lord. God, that we would be saved. Yes, Lord. And Father, tonight we confess him. Yes, Lord. Father, we ask that you would forgive our sins. Yes, forgive Say it with me. Father, forgive, forgive our sins. God, we confess with our mouth and we believe with our heart that your son Jesus died for our sins. And so tonight, we ask that you would take this out of me and me out of this. I give up everything that I was. I give up everything that was not like you. God, and I give you myself. I ask you to forgive every way that did not please you. But tonight, I ask you to receive me. I ask you to accept me. I ask you to forgive me. And tonight, I accept you in my heart. I believe that you have saved me. And I believe that my life is changed. And whatever you say I can do, I can do. And whatever you say I can have, I can have. And whatever you call me to be, I am that. And so tonight we call those things that are not as though they already are. And we are victorious in Jesus. God, we bless your name tonight. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for your son, Jesus. And we give your name the praise. Come on and bless him with him. Come on and bless him. They said the angels rejoice with one soul. And tonight we have how many souls on the stage? And God, we thank you. Before, before, I ask just, just to play very quietly. All of you that have come up, 
you are saved. And you are safe. So now all you have to do is walk in that salvation. Now a big part of walking in that salvation is, as Joel Osteen would say, get yourself in a good Bible-based church. Amen. Amen. Now you may join that church online or you may go to the building. I'm not going to tell you how you got to do it, but you need to get into a church. Into a community of believers where you can grow and you can continue to walk out this salvation to its fullest. Amen. Yes. If you need help finding a church, we can help you. There's many, many churches represent. Anybody know a good church? Anybody know a good church? All right. You see all these good churches in the house? But we want to see you grow strong. We want to see you walk in the fullness of your calling. And part of being in a church and a good community will help you do that. And I need you to know that, that you're amazing. You're wonderful. You're incredible. And if you could see how God sees you you would know that everything that you're worried about is already taken care of. Can you say that? Can you believe that? Some of y'all know that you needed to be up here. But I need you to know everything you're worried about is already taken care of. Now before we leave this place, one of the things I want to make sure that you do is not only do I want you to hug your neighbor one more time, but I also want to make sure you are introducing yourself to each other. The Ascend community is about this. It's community. Please don't just come, get a word, and leave. Please make sure you are plugging into each other so that as a community we can grow in His name. Amen? 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 Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray as we leave this... Oh, okay. We got two more announcements. All right, cool. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that before we leave this place, dear God, that you would foster a sense of community that you would foster a sense of power and you would seal this experience in the name of Jesus. I pray, dear Lord, for all those that came up and accepted the call. I pray, though, dear Lord, for all those that are still in the audience, dear Heavenly Father. And I pray, dear God, that as we walk this thing out, that we would see you like we never have before and that you would continue to show us who you are. You continue to provide the help. And I'm praying, dear God, for a greater uh, spirit of discipline yes. in the house, yes. a greater spirit of determination, yes. and a greater spirit of persistence. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we pray and all God's children say. Amen.